May God's blessings be upon you all today and your loved ones. As the readings tell us about what it means to be a Christian. The Lord said, we are sent to be witnesses. To make people hear about the kingdom. So his mission becomes our mission. Christ's mission shall become our mission. He came to proclaim the kingdom. That's also what we should do. But we are here today to strengthen our faith so that his life will become our life. We have a lot of problems today in some areas of the world. Catholics are persecuted because of their faith. But the Lord tells us, do not worry about what you will say. It will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. So in order for Christ's mission to be our mission, His life should become our life. And that's why we worship God in the Eucharist and offer Christ for the salvation of souls, for the forgiveness of sins. Telling the world, return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. So in the Gospel, the Lord already warns us that if His mission becomes our mission, if we proclaim the kingdom, justice and peace and uh, taking care of the environment, people will not like us too much. During the time of the early Christians, they were persecuted. But sometimes, persecution is good for the church. According to Tertullian in the second century, sanguis martyrum semina ecclesia. The blood of martyrs waters. It's like seed that will grow, that will make the church grow. So even if there's no direct persecution, let us offer to God our sufferings, our pain. It's painful enough being a human being. We have to make painful decisions. His life should become our life and his mission should become our mission, especially our mission today. There's COVID-19, there's economic collapse coming because of Ukraine and Russia and being invaded by Russia, there's climate change. How can we proclaim the kingdom? Especially to people who are indifferent to the proclamation of God's word. First reading. Return to Israel to the Lord your God. I would like to share with you today some facts about our mission today. There's 1.3 billion Catholics. We were part of a survey. 18, uh, 15,365 young people were interviewed about their faith all over the world. Let's just talk about the Catholics. 24%. 33% said they had a Catholic upbringing. And they are still Christian, 27% working in the church. What I would like to tell you today is that this worldwide survey 
shows that the faith grows if they grow up in it. So 25% of them regularly attend a religious service and the 27% are very active. But I would like to tell you today what, what they understand, what they need. Why do you participate in your community of worship? Number one, to grow in my faith. The weekly attendees, 65%. Frequent attendees, 51%. And infrequent attendees, 38%. To learn about God, it is how I live out my faith, teachings that are relevant to my life, wisdom for how to live faithfully, it's the right thing to do, wisdom for how scriptures apply to my life, and 32% go because of the music, worship music, 31% because of the sacraments, 31% because of prayer events like charismatic prayer groups. Yung iba nakaugalian na lang. And 27% to care for the poor and the needy. So these are the people that we should preach to today. Let us pray today for seven seminarians graduates of Christ the King, they will become postulants. In December, new Divine Word missionaries, 14 will be ordained. That's almost a miracle now because in some dioceses, they don't have ordinations for several years. And there are also a lot who would like to enter a religious congregation for women. Pray for them all. Pray for the young. Because first, very difficult to talk to them now. Many of them are connected but alone. Only one third say that they have personal relationships. Imagine a lot of these young people are lonely. You think they will post their breakfast, they will post their TikTok dances. Many of them are lonely, two-thirds. Connected but alone. These are the people that Prophet Hosea in the first reading today says, Return, O Jerusalem. Only 25% of them think about life eternal. They're so present, rooted in the present, they do not think about what will happen if they will die. That's too far away. And some of them are thinking of ending their lives. 40% of them, or 60% are not optimistic or empowered about their future. Very pessimistic. The young people today, they do not trust the church, they do not trust the companies, they do not trust especially the government. And there is some hope because the vast majority of young people are concerned about justice causes, healthy expressions of leadership, and especially the environment. But Many of them lack personal engagement in the solutions they desire. So let us pray for young people. They are like sheep without the shepherd. They are very young. They know a lot. Because be, before they can walk, they already know how to swipe and look at games. And, but if Christ's mission becomes our mission because his life becomes our life. Do not worry about how to talk to the young. It will be the spirit of the Father that will give you the words to talk to these guys 
who are playing Valorant and Mobile Legends and Jensen Impact until 2 o'clock in the morning. You will be given the right words to say to them so that many of them will hear God's call and more of them will find meaning and a sense of purpose. Find out the reason why they are in this universe with the galaxies and the stars and the planets. Many of them do not know why they are here. So let us pray today that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Father, will tell us how to speak, how to proclaim God's kingdom to the young people, to the troubled young people today.